Chapter 16 Disaccord The Third Hell Sincroft Karsten's Home Well, I don't know how y'all did it so quick, but I reckon it's done, Karsten said, looking down at the head of Darien laying on his dinner table. I mean, I wasn't expecting to see y'all again, truth be told. We had a very valuable asset whose efforts enabled our quick success, Anders said, patting Krynan on the back. Without Krynan, I do believe our mission would have taken a much greater deal of time. We are quite fortuitous to be in his company. All right, then, Karsten said in an unsure tone. Oh, shit, I wasn't open to leave the house tonight. Yeah, well, I was, Krynan replied. How do we get out of here? Well, kid, trick to getting out of here is killing the croft keeper, Garston replied. If you're lucky, you can find one of the gates when they appear, but they're only open for about 15 seconds at a time before they vanish and appear in another part of the walls. Can't count on the second option. That sounds like information I could have gotten for free from any of the other thousands of people here, Krynan said. No, hell, kid, it's hundreds of thousands, Karsten replied. But you agreed to pay for this information with Darian's head, and you got it. So wait, that's fucking it? Krynan asked. He could feel his anger flaring up inside him. That's all we get out of this? Yep, Karsten said. But now you got a sense of what to do next. Good for you. If you'll kindly leave my home... I'd be very appreciative. Krynan lifted his sword and pointed the tip at Karsten. No, we're not fucking playing that stupid-ass game. You're getting us the fuck out of this. You're gonna lower that weapon in my house. Karsten boomed. Not a second passed before the sound of a revolver discharging caused everyone's ears to ring. A bullet struck Krynan in the middle of his armor, and the blue light of his shields flickered before Malinka got to her feet and stood between the two of them. Stop it. Malinka snapped. You said you'd show us the way out of Sincroft if we took care of Darien for you, not tell us some random Sincroft trivia. So you get up and get out of here and you show us the way. Move, Malinka. Krynan seethed. I'll fucking kill him. No, you won't. Malinka said. You will lower that shitty sword and shut your stupid fucking mouth. Do you understand? Krynan grumbled as he allowed his sword arm to fall. He and Malinka glared at each other for a moment before he turned and walked away, finally leaning against a wall off to the side. Malinka sighed and looked back at Karsten. I will say that I concur with Miss Malinka here, Anders said softly from his spot at the table. While your intentions may have been to provide information, the verbiage of your contract with us stated that you would indeed show us the way, so I must insist that you lead us to this croft keeper. Karsten stared at Ander and Malinka silently for a moment, and then he sighed as he ran his fingers through his long hair. Y'all know I have shit to do. You said you didn't plan on leaving your house, Malinka argued. Well, what if I flat out refuse? Karsten asked with a raised eyebrow. Then I'll cut off your head, too, Krynan said. Shut up, Malinka snapped, and Krynan closed his mouth. Karsten looked over at Krynan, who leaned against the wall with his arms crossed. Fine. You know what? I'll take you to the croft keeper. I'll show you the way to him, but I ain't helping you kill him. According to our contract, all I need to do is show you the way. Wonderful, Ander said as he stood from his chair. Then let us venture forth that we may... Tomorrow, Karsten added, cutting Ander off. It's night time. You don't want to spend too much time on the streets of Sincroft at night. What the fuck do you mean it's night time? Krynan asked. It's always night time here. Just because it's always dark don't mean we don't have night and day, Karsten said, looking to Ander. Ander reluctantly nodded in agreement. He speaks truth, Ander said with a yawn. It is indeed night time, and now that I am thinking about it, I have grown a bit weary from my travels. I've been in the hells all this time, Krynan said. 
I haven't slept once. I don't feel tired. I don't feel like I need to sleep. Crinan suddenly felt a yawn coming on. Now, oh, by the brothers, he said as he raised his hand to his mouth. Yeah, you don't look tired at all, little bitch, Karsten said with a snort. Well, if you ain't slept in days, then you should sleep real good tonight, Karsten said. Come on, I got a spot up in the attic y'all can camp out in. Your hospitality is much appreciated, sir, Anders said as he rose from his chair. Everyone got to their feet, and the sounds of their seats creaking and chair legs scraping against the floor filled the room. Grinan cringed at all the extra noises and pushed himself away from the wall he was leaning against. As he put his weight on the black wood behind him, he felt something give way and heard the slightest of cracking noises. He clenched his teeth together and glanced at Karsten, making sure he didn't hear the noise. Fortunately, Karsten was oblivious. Ladders this way. Karsten said, beckoning the others to follow. Krynan ran his hand along the wood of the wall he had somehow broken. There was a clear, flattened circle of cracks, and Krynan noted that it was dry and coarse. Splinters embedded themselves in his fingers, and Krynan grabbed his hand, cursing. Shit, he whispered. A few slivers of wood protruded from his skin, and he immediately brought his hand to his mouth. He bit down gently, trying to remove the intruders, and then turned his head and spit the splinters on the ground. "'What the fuck are you doing?' Karsten hollered. "'If you have to spit, go outside!' "'Fuck you!' Krynan called back. "'I'm coming!' He walked across the dining area to get to the living room. Krynan noted that there was only an old-looking rocking chair and coffee table in the living room. No TV, no lights, no comforts. Krynan walked past the sparse furnishing and to a wall where the others stood. Ladder's right here, Karsten said. I'll ask that you go on ahead and hit up. I don't much care for company and don't want y'all breaking anything else. Anything else? Ander asked, tilting his head. Did one of us... Ah, Krynan sighed. So you saw that. I did, boy, Karsten said with a glare. Get up there and get some rest. I'll come fetch you when it's morning. You have my apologies, Anders said, glancing over at Krynan and then back to Karsten. Had I known... No apology needed, Karsten said, shaking his head. House is about to fall over anyway. Can't be helped. Now, go on and get. Without a word, Malenka climbed up the ladder. Krynan noted the creaking as she climbed and then Ander followed. When Ander was up, Krynan reached out to take hold of the ladder, but Karsten reached out his hand and pushed against Krynan's chest, preventing him from moving forward. You hold on, Karsten said. I want to talk to you. Why? Krynan asked. Just come with me. Let's talk in private, Karsten said. He walked away and Malinka peeked her eyes over the opening above. Krynan and her eyes met for a moment and he couldn't look away. She stared in silence, and he looked back, wondering what was going through her mind. Finally, she extended her hand and lifted her middle finger toward him. Krynan pursed his lips together and followed Karsten back into the dining room. Don't sit, Karsten said as Krynan appeared. Wasn't planning on it, Krynan replied. Good. Karsten cracked his knuckles and leaned back against the crumbling countertop in his kitchen. He reached into his front shirt pocket and produced a pack of cigarettes. Krynan spotted them quickly, and Karsten raised an eyebrow. Smoke? he asked, holding the pack out to Krynan. Sure, Krynan replied. Karsten tossed Krynan the pack and then struck a match, lighting the cigarette between his lips. He took a drag and tossed Krynan his matchbook. I can forgive what just happened. Can you? Karsten asked with a solemn tone. It would probably be the mature thing to do, Krynan spat back. I'm glad to see you growing up a bit. Now, tell me, why are you here? Karsten asked as he pulled the cigarette away, exhaling a breath of smoke. Just waiting for you to show me the way out, Krynan replied and then breathed out his own plume. No, I mean, how'd you get here, to the hells? Karsten asked. His demeanor was still frigid, and he looked at Krynan with the same look of distrust that was in his eyes when they first met. I was ambushed, 
Crinan said thoughtfully, thinking back to the night of his death. Killed in cold blood? Karsten asked. I guess so, Crinan replied. That's too bad. You're young. Had some life ahead of you, Karsten said. Lots of holes up in the real world young men need to fill, I reckon. Weird, Crinan remarked as he took another drag. You come from the modern age? Karsten asked. Age of Govia, or whatever it's called. Yeah, Crinan replied. What's that like? Bloody, Crinan said. Smells bad. Lots of people gathered in the cities. Some in the wastes. Everybody's just waiting to die. Crinan paused and looked away from Karsten. What? What about you? Like I said, age of dust for me, Karsten said. Just barely, though. I was one of the few who were lucky enough to make it here. After the Humon ships arrived, when the Demarcy Kingdom was scattered and the old deer were pushed back to their own lands, sorry, I mean the Vampre and the Lycani, that's what the Humon people called them anyway. Elves and the fair united under the Humons and had one hell of a golden age. I see, Crinan nodded slightly. I was born toward the end of the age of dust, you see, Carson said as he took another puff of his cigarette. I was two years old when the age of ancients came to be. Should have let myself die naturally, kid. I'd have spared myself the grief of having to live in the hells. What do you mean? Crinan asked. I was an old elf when the Nane business came round, Carson said. Year we saw it was supposed to be my 120th birthday, year 118. I remember it fondly. My boys was all grown, daughters were all married off. Just me, the wife, and a couple of kids who couldn't seem to find their way at the homestead. I seen it in the paper one day. Nane, live forever, or something like that. That old lifelinks corporation promised us everlasting life. Can't say they didn't deliver on their promise, just not in the way I hoped. What's lifelinks? Crinan asked. I don't know much about the ancients. Lifelinks was some kind of science company or something. Karsten shrugged. Created the Nane, power that I reckon runs these hells. Boy, you wouldn't believe what they did. Not a hundred miles from my home was a dirt quarry. Whoever thought people be mining dirt? I bet you're asking yourself why, ain't you? I mean, I am now. Crinan shrugged. Nane, you see, was some kind of magic if I ever seen it. Karsten shook his head and turned to his coffee pot. People was mining dirt because they could use Nane to turn the dirt into apples, bacon, damn steaks, and three-course dinners. Hells, whatever you wanted, Nane could make it out of dirt. You need a house? Dig yourself up a mound of dirt and have lifelinks come out and release their Nane. Want a new car? No problem. Nane's got your back. It was some wild times. Wild shit, friend. Wild shit. Why? Crinan asked, furrowing his brow. Why make things out of dirt? Well, that's the thing, Karsten said. He placed the coffee pot back down and lifted a cup to his lips. They didn't make things out of dirt. The Nane turned the dirt into something else. Whatever you wanted. Something about rearranging molecules or some shit. I don't know a lick of science, kid. I just know the Nane changed the way the world worked. How? Crichton asked. Well, hunger went away, that's for damn sure, Karsten said. Age of dust only lasts about eighty years. Wasn't much of an age at all. And after the collapse of the Demarcy Empire, after the Humans took control, there was a time of chaos, you see. Feudal shit. People was land grabbing and making claims and trying to bring back the old kingdoms and what not. The Humans, you see, there wasn't too many of them. I don't know how many to be exact, but there was billions of us natives. Took a long time to get us to calm our asses down. Humans did it, though. Don't know how, don't know why, but they was a peaceful and patient people. I met a bunch of them in my time. They sure was smart. Anyway, during the Age of Dust and a good while into the Age of Ancients, there was one hells of a hunger crisis. People was killing the neighbors for food, and some was killing the neighbors for food. 
Things got real messy, and the world wasn't taking too kindly to it. Progress was being made, yes, but it wasn't happening fast enough. Not till lifelinks came along. That's when we saw that nanny business, and everyone started being fed. People was living indefinitely and staying pretty the whole time. A lot of my friends ended up going to a place called the Afterscape. It was a land that the Nani took you to that wasn't our world. They say it was made in a computer. They say it became the Hales. Yeah, Krynan nodded. That's what I heard, too. Yeah, I remember the day I was supposed to wake up and go fishing with my boys. We was in the Afterscape, you see. It was like heaven. Karsten's voice lowered as his memory surfaced. I ain't seen my boys since that day. I know they're all out there. My boys, my wife, my girls. They're all out there. Maybe done gone and become touched at this point. I hope not. Karsten tossed his spent cigarette and his cold coffee inside. Anyway, that's my story. Ain't why I pulled you aside, though. What did you want? Krynan asked. He walked up to Karsten's coffee cup and dropped his cigarette butt in. Karsten's face wrinkled up for a moment, but then he shrugged. It looked like he thought about being offended, but changed his mind. Let in there, fella, Karsten said lowly. He said something when we first met, that you was working on a way to get out of here. I don't know what I'm doing, Krynan replied. I'm just following voices. Voices, Karsten repeated. You touched? <laughs> I hope not, Krynan snorted. Well, if you are trying to get out of here, out of the hells, I mean, how are you planning on doing it? All I know is I need to get to the seventh level, Krynan answered. Other than that, I'm like you. I don't know much about science. What do you know about Krynan? Karsten replied. Living, Krynan shrugged. Breathing. Eating, drinking, fucking, fighting, and shitting it all back out. Karsten cocked his head and gave Krynan an odd look. He squinted his eyes and released a hum. I heard them words before, he said. He raised a hand and scratched his beard. Somewhere, long time ago, them words mean something. Where'd you hear them? Dad used to say it, Krynan replied. Way too much. Well... Karsten shook the thought from his mind. I reckon I ain't got the time to figure it out right now. Listen, I ain't asking to come with you or nothing, but think if I got to the seventh level, then maybe you could get other folk out of here too. I couldn't tell you, Krynan said. Karsten seemed to get lost in thought for a moment before finally he snorted and shook his head. I won't keep you anymore. Birdie girl upstairs might need somebody to keep her warm. Not that it's cold in the hills. She means something to you? She used to, Krynan sighed. Well, Karsten tilted his head to the side. Ain't no better time than now to fix that. Hells can get mighty lonesome. No piece of advice. I don't really. You gon' get it. Karsten cut him off. Whatever you think she needs, you're wrong. You gotta talk to her. Don't guess. She'll tell you if she wants to. Man, if she wants to, then I reckon you might just still mean something to her. Thanks, Krynan replied. All right, then. Karsten reached out and shooed Krynan away. Get on now. We got work to do in the morning. Okay. Good night, Karsten. Night, Krynan. <laughs>